And it's like, well, if going out on a date with a guy makes me a slut, then that's just what I'm going to be. I don't think going out on a date makes you a slut, but having sex with different men makes you, makes you a slut. Well, what does it make you if you have sex with different women? A slut maker. Men don't want sluts as wives and mothers of their children. Who cares? I don't, you can't live your life for no man. It's not about men. Who cares about men? If I sat here and lived my life for a man, I would be miserable. But you do understand that a man would not want a slut to be the mother of his children, That's right? not true because... Not real men. A, a what is slut a real man, man Jesse? What is a real man? You? Uh, yes. I understand. And my actual statement is we have yet to obtain the original post and the employee's social media accounts appear to be deleted. From what we can gather online, the following is the basic rundown. Yes. So would you not that's, deem it relevant that the person gathering online is in the video, the person in question said, these are my posts. Of course, these are my posts. Is that not relevant? I suppose in this, I suppose that it is, and I'm happy to quote you on that. Um, is that, yes. No, quote uh, no, don't quote me, quote them on it. You said you've seen the video, quote them on it. Them saying, of course, those are my posts. I don't need you to quote me. This person said it, it's on camera. Is that in quite, are, are, are you disagreeing with me on that? I, I'm confused here. I clear, I never said that I disagreed with you. So then why Please is do it not in put words in my mouth. So then what is, the, what is the issue here? Don't quote me, quote the person in question who said, of course, this is my post. Otherwise, it's activism, update. not journalism. Excuse me? Otherwise, it is activism, not journalism. Okay. Do you consider yourself a journalist? No. Okay. Um, what? Do you? Under the... Sir, I do not appreciate the sarcasm. No, do you? Uh, of course I am. Okay. Well, I, 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 it was not sarcastic at all. I wasn't quite sure from this conversation. I thought maybe you were an op-eds person, which is totally fine. I have no problem with someone who is an op-ed writer, who is an opinion writer. I have no, no problem with that if it's clearly, explicitly stated in the piece. Okay. I understand that going back to it, you are upset that I uh, mentioned your height. <laughs> but no. But the, the entire... Excuse me? No. Okay. Well, could I finish, please? I understand that you have met This is Savannah Hernandez for Infowars.com. We're out here on the streets of Austin today to ask people what they think about the Trump-Putin summit and if they're buying the mainstream media lie that President Trump betrayed the U.S. Do you think that President Trump betrayed our whole country during the Trump-Putin summit yesterday? Uh, yes. Yeah. But not our country, because I'm not from him. But yeah, I think he betrayed the U.S. Absolutely. How come? Because he denied the efficacy of our own uh, security apparatus and he indeed prefers the Soviet approach, the, Soviet, the Russian approach to the uh, solutions of the world. It's, it's just preposterous. Let's set aside for one moment the debate about whether or not abortion is a constitutional right. I would submit that it is not. You can read the Constitution, squeeze lemon juice on it, hold it upside down, it's just not in there. But let's assume it was. Let's assume it was sort of invisibly there as part of the Bill of Rights. Right up there with free speech and right up there with the right to religion and the right to assembly and so on. Here's my question to you. Why should the abortion right be subsidized when none of our other fundamental rights are? I mean, you have a right to free speech. Does the government give you money to start a newspaper? You have a Second Amendment right to own a gun. Is the government going to buy you a, a, a shotgun? You have a right to free assembly. You've got to do it on your own time. You have a right to a free ex exercise of religion. The government's not going to pay for your churches. So since the government pays for none of our other fundamental rights, why does this right get to be in a category of itself? The power to investigate, to search, to seize, to stop the power to allege and accuse, the power to eavesdrop and intercept private communications, the power to look through bank records, the power to look through phone records, the power to even check what books you checked out of the library. 
These are awesome powers that must be used responsibly because those powers affect reputations and freedom. These awesome powers are given a correspondingly high expectation that these powers will be used fairly, lawfully, professionally, and in a manner worthy of our respect. About two weeks ago, FBI agent Peter Strzok was interviewed for more than 10 hours. We learned that agent Strzok has a most unusual and largely self-serving definition of bias. Agent Strzok, despite the plain language of his text and emails, despite the Inspector General's report, and despite common sense, doesn't think he was biased. He thinks calling someone destabilizing for the country isn't bias. He thinks promising to protect the country from someone he hasn't even begun to investigate isn't bias. He thinks promising to stop someone he is supposed to be fairly investigating from ever becoming president isn't bias. He thinks talking about an insurance policy to keep someone from becoming president isn't bias. But that's for one of the folks he was investigating. He has a different set of rules for others that he's investigating. Agent Strzok thinks saying someone he is allegedly investigating should be elected president 100 million to zero before he ever interviews her. He doesn't think that's bias. Agent Strzok thinks pronouncing someone innocent before bothering to interview more than 30 different witnesses isn't bias. He thinks claiming you can smell the Trump supporters isn't biased, but he doesn't say a single solitary word about being able to smell the support of any other candidate. To him, that isn't bias. The moment special counsel Bob Mueller found out about Peter Strzok's text and emails, he kicked him off of the investigation. But that was a year and a half too late the text and the emails may have been discovered in May of 2017, but the bias existed and was manifest a year and a half before that, all the way back to late 2015 and early 2016. So it wasn't the discovery of text that got him fired. It was the bias manifest in those texts that made him unfit to objectively and dispassionately investigate. So if the bias existed in late 2015 and early 2016, and it did, his unfitness to investigate existed then as well. Agent Strzok struggled to define bias for the better part of 10 hours. For the rest of us, bias is the prejudging of a person, a group, or a thing. It usually has a negative connotation, but it is a preconceived position or a prejudgment. It is the making up of your mind ahead of time based on anything other than the facts, and that is exactly what he did. Bias is saying Hillary Clinton should win the presidency 100 million to zero when she was still under investigation, wasn't even the nominee, hadn't been interviewed, and 30 other witnesses had also not been interviewed. In March of 2016, Agent Strzok had Clinton winning 100 million to zero, even though the investigation was far from being over. That is the prejudging of someone's innocence before all the evidence is in. On the other hand, he said Trump would be destabilizing, called him an idiot, abysmal, bigoted nonsense, called him a disaster, said he should F himself. Strzok promised to stop Trump from becoming president before the investigation even began. He talked longingly of Trump resigning two months after he was inaugurated and well before the special counsel investigation even began. Strzok even talked about impeachment the day special counsel was appointed. That is prejudging guilt, it is prejudging punishment, and it is textbook bias. We live in a 50-50 country, and we accept that. But we're a 100% country when it comes to having law enforcement that doesn't prejudge innocence before investigations are over and doesn't prejudge guilt and punishment before an investigation even begins. Agent Strzok had Hillary Clinton winning the White House before he finished investigating her. 
Agent Strzok had Donald Trump impeached before he even started investigating him. That is bias. Agent Strzok may not see it, but the rest of the country does, and it's not what we want, expect, or deserve from any law enforcement officer, much less the FBI. Hello, my name is Jay. I'm social justice race. Agree with me or you'll be shamed. Hello, my name is Jay. I'm social justice race.